blinking that means we're rolling and good good all right everybody thanks for tuning in we've had kind of an increase in traffic traffic lately on youtube and soundcloud and itunes and that's all cool perhaps it's because more people are home right now during the midst of the covid calamity if you will uh the, it's a serious thing but you know we're trying to um still move forward in our education and learn from people so today I have uh, a gentleman with me who is um, the founder of a company called Stick Mobility. And we met, uh, I don't know, about a year and a half ago, maybe at the Barefoot Summit. I might have seen you at an NASM thing too, but anyways, I want to introduce my guest, Dennis Dunphy. Thanks for joining me, man. How are you doing? Good, Carl. How are you doing, sir? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Oh, it's my honor. I mean, you know, what you have, the product you have is... It's fantastic, and I, I want people to know about it. That's, you know, I want them to know all as much as you want to share. You know, the, the sky's the limit. I got 90 minutes before I have to do anything else. <laughs> so, so, but uh, you're 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 in charge of education there too, right? You and Neil work the education. Yes, Neil Valera and I we handle the uh, education and the yep. programming. So that's what we do uh, behind the scenes, and then uh, we have business partners that handle the business side and the product side. That's cool. Uh, so that's, uh, it's a good team. We have great synergy. Uh, so things have been going really well. Um, the COVID thing has actually uh, been a huge boon to us, actually, uh, because people are at home. Uh, they're looking for tools and that are practical, uh, that don't take up a lot of space, that uh, don't require a, a lot of upfront costs, especially with people losing jobs. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, we have seen a huge uptick because of that. So, I mean, um, if there's a silver lining in the cloud for the company, it's been that. Um, but I think we've been fortunate, uh, fortunate enough to be able to have the ability with the multimedia that we have today. Uh, we've been able to put a lot of free content out there for people to gravitate to. Uh, and uh, we want them to understand how to use a stick. And not just particularly ours. I mean, people always say, you know, well, I'd rather just make my own. And we're like, that's perfectly fine. Just, we're just showing you how to use it. Right. And so, you know, how do you, why are we pushing the stick into the floor? Why are we pushing it into a wall? Why are we pulling apart on it or shortening it? Mm -hmm. You know, why does the stick have to flex? These are all aspects that, that we're utilizing to help really get you to own your ranges of motion. And as uh, Todd Wright, he's the head of, he's the uh, head strength and conditioning coordinator for the LA Clippers, as he says, you know, the, the stick adds energy to the kinetic chain. And mm -hmm. that's what it does. And it's a huge, when he said that to us, you know, that, that really hit it right on the head. Uh, it's, it's a short, succinct way of just describing what the stick brings to you. And that's exactly, that's what was right on point. That's cool. That's a um, great way to put it too. Yeah. Great way to put it. So tell me like, what, what, what go back to uh, early days. Like how did this develop and um, how, how long has the company been around or the product? Uh, we actually, our very first social media post was in May of 2015. So okay. we are going on, we're almost, this month will be five year, our five year anniversary. Uh, so we spent about a year uh, before that developing it. So um, there's a gentleman over in Santa Cruz. Uh, he's a chiropractor. I think he's retired. At least that's what he told me last time I talked to him. Uh, Dr. Arthur Fagenholtz uh, is an awesome human being, just a cool guy. And uh, we were told about him a long time ago, probably about eight, seven, eight years ago. And uh, Neil has a chiropractor that he works with, and he advised Neil, hey, you need to go check this guy out. He does this thing called stick stretching, stick yoga. Mm -hmm. And so we were kind of like, well, whatever, you know. And uh, at first we were kind of like, I mean, we looked at his website and we were kind of like, yeah, I don't know, really know if that's something we want to be into, right? So finally, after enough coaxing, we finally said, all right, we're going to go over it. 
And so we went and took a one day workshop with him. And literally within the first hour, we were just like, Oh, are you kidding me? This is insane. And so he uses the stick. He used rattan sticks. Uh, rattan is an offshoot of bamboo. And he uses rattan sticks to help his patients just stretch. Yeah. And so when Neil and I were using it, we were like, oh, there is so much strength training and isometrics you could do with this. And the feedback would just be incredible, right? Yeah. And so um, we started working with him. And he said, well, you guys do strength and conditioning and more of a personal training. So he goes, you guys handle the, you guys use it as you see fit. So we told him, we said, well, we're going to create our own system. And he said, that's perfectly fine. You know, he gave us our blessing on that. And that's when we created stick mobility. In fact, after that first one day session, we were coming back over the hill from Santa Cruz. And that's when Neil was in the car and he said, stick mobility. And I was all like, there it is done. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, right from, and right from there, we were like, okay, let's start trademarking it. Let's, uh, you know, so we, we uh, went and got the trademarks, went online, started finding a person to do logos and all that good stuff. So uh, got the uh, incorporation, of all, that, all that business side stuff done. So we mailed that out. And then uh, we just started working on program designing and what we do with the stick. Yeah. And uh, from there, we just, when we started posting in May of 2015, we just let the community decide where this was going to go. Yeah. That's cool. That's a great way to do it, too. Then you find out where the wants and needs are. And you can. Yeah, I think, drive yeah, down I think a lot of businesses, yeah, try to impose where they want it to go, which is, mm -hmm. which if it works, great. But uh, I think with, with the type of access that we have, what the average person has to, to all these different uh, mediums. I, I think it's, it's, it's a, it's more imperative to let them tell you where you, where they want you to go because you know, that's, you don't take them and try to force them if they're, if they're a round peg and force them into the square hole, you know? So uh, that's all we did. We started posting content and, and we didn't expect much at all when we first started. Uh, we just really, our goal was to help people just move better, but locally, you know, we were thinking, okay, we'll pick up a few new clients, you know, run, a, run some group classes and we'll see what happens. And then all of a sudden people from all over the world started reaching out and, and we were like, wow. Okay. So this is, this is where it's going to go. And, uh, and it just took off from there. That's great. That's great. So you are, um, uh, you, you do some international travel, if I'm right. Is that correct? Yeah, I do quite a bit. Um, typically, uh, we're in the Middle East. We're in Southeast Asia. Uh, we have a couple of distributors in Europe and uh, been to Brazil. I was in Brazil last year. Uh, Brazil's a little bit harder due to business costs to... So, and that's what's interesting on the business side is, is education is one thing. The business side is something completely different, of course, but it's trying to get the, trying to figure out how one affects the other. Yeah. And so uh, in some countries, um, because their economy is a little bit, is a little bit on the lower end, their dollar's a lot weaker, it really creates some issues sometimes uh, on the product side. Sure. I, yeah, I, I mean, I've experienced that too. And uh, man, when I was in Argentina a couple of years ago, their 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 economy tanked literally. Like during a two week period, and I was there in the middle of that two weeks. They just went from uh, it, it got really bad, and yeah, I felt bad for them. So I I can relate to what you're talking about there. Uh, just even the education side, having people that show up for workshops became a challenge but we managed but uh yeah so there are special uh, certain areas where it can be more difficult but of course you have the other ones that um flourish and do well and i'm i'm really glad man this is great so it's almost five years as of right now which is april 27th yeah, yeah um so tell me um just curious what is you well you have a great youtube channel a lot of stuff 
a lot of stuff on YouTube that people can watch. And I'll make sure that I have links to things here when I edit. Uh, when I edit, I usually don't cut anything out. I just add things like links yeah. and this and that. But uh, for people who might not be familiar with uh, stick mobility, can you describe the the instrument itself, you know, how long it is, are there different lengths and it's flexible and like some of the, uh, no pun intended, the core things you would do with them. And I know core is one of them. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the sticks come in different lengths. I mean, we sell everything from three foot up to seven foot. Uh, we do have custom eight foot sticks, but those are typically only for our NBA players or collegiate basketball players. Okay. Uh, they have some of them, a lot of them have seven plus uh, foot wingspans. So uh, uh, yeah. do, they have a longer stick yeah, for that. Right. So the, uh, for the rest of us, typically the six foot sticks are typically the most versatile stick lengths for most of us. Uh, if you're old, if you're close to six foot or over, then of course you're going to want the seven foot sticks. Yeah. Uh, but we, they, they're strong, resilient sticks. They have flex in them because that flex allows a yielding contraction. So that way it allows you to get to your end range and that pushing the stick into the end range is what brings that tension to the fascial system, recruits the tissues, the muscle fibers. And so we're not passively trying to achieve our end range. We're actively trying to achieve our end range. Uh, that's one of the biggest things that we've always noticed with stretching yeah. is how passive it is, and it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. If you're going to just hang out in a position, there's no adaptation taking place. There's no change. So what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, it, Granted, you're going into a posture and hanging out there, which, which it, it has its own va validation to it. It has its own benefits. But if you're telling me that you're trying to increase your range of motion, then you can't do that passively. You need to you need to recruit tissues. You need to have tension so that way you start to really bring neural drive and neuromuscular control to those unranged positions. And so that's what the stick allows us to do. And for a lot of people, getting to their end range, it's a stability thing too, right? So the sticks give you added stability, right? Yeah. So that way you're not going to fall over. You're not going to. Uh, the brain doesn't sense instability and therefore doesn't allow you to get into that end range. The brain senses, okay, there's stability. Uh, we can use it in a closed chain application and closed chain is where learning predominantly takes place. So these are the different facets and the different reasons why uh, we want to use the stick uh, to help really increase your range of motion and, and not just increase your flexibility, but Owning a range of motion requires strength. And so uh, I know for people that do our system and have gone through the education or do the workouts, they're pretty amazed at how fatiguing it does get. And so, and that's, our, and that's what we want them to understand. Mobility work is, that, is exactly that. It's work. Yeah. And if you're trying to do mobility work and you're not feeling some effort or feeling that tension then in our opinion you should move on and do other things because it's not really it, to us sometimes it's kind of like wasting time yeah and i think there's a, a distinct difference between mobility and flexibility uh range of motion is a great uh it's funny because 30 literally 30 35 years ago i remember it's mid 80s so 35 years ago i was at the gym lifting and i saw this guy using a wooden stick right like mm -hmm. really seven feet long because when I, I was six two so when I got it I uh yeah I could put my hands on it and I didn't know what the, I didn't know anything back then I was a drummer only a drummer <laughs> that's all I knew but I'll tell you I would use it only for a couple movements and it helped me a lot um mm -hmm. and then you know fast forward 25 years to 10 years ago when I got into this business which is kind of an accident but I'm really glad it happened because I love it and the whole Parkinson's thing was another accident eight years ago, and I love that. Um, and I'm going to get to that too, and how this has helped with Parkinson's is uh, started learning more about range of motion, the difference between flexibility and mobility, and uh, well, there are distinct differences. Now, with the Parkinson's population, uh, one of the 
cardinal motor symptoms, if you will, is rigidity, right? Mm -hmm. You have uh, the classic four motor symptoms, plus there's a fifth one that's been identified now too. Um, you know, tremor, not everyone gets every one of these symptoms. Some people never get a tremor, but postural instability, tremor, bradykinesia, slowness of movement, akinesia, the inability to move at the power of your free will, you're stuck, feels like you're glued to the floor, your feet are. Then there's rigidity, which is this stiffness. Mm -hmm. It's not good for movement. It's not good for posture. It can cause pain. A very underdiagnosed um, pain is underdiagnosed in Parkinson's, and it's very prevalent in the population. So when I've been traveling and they have stick mobility, sometimes they don't have it, and we'll use something else. When we have the stick mobility stick there, it's great because of the flexibility it offers. And we do, like you say, these people get a workout working that rigidity and Im improving their range of motion in a few minutes. You know, they have to keep doing it on a regular basis to maintain or improve. But it's been a great that 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 actually works the range of motion and it helps them with actual mobility when they start walking. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. But as, as well as anyone, when you have better posture, you are going to likely move better and reduce your risk of falling. So there's, there's a, I think all humans can use stick mobility. <laughs> yeah, we probably yeah, all yeah. need it for some reason, you know, it's, it's a great thing. We've had, that's the thing with, that's awesome about what we have is the fact that no matter what the skill set, uh, you can use the stick to some for some benefits. I mean, the wheelchair population. I've had the privilege of working with a couple of people in the wheelchair population, and uh, you know, as we know, they're upper body dominant. They they're move. They're always pushing and pulling on the wheels, unless they have a motorized one, right? Uh, but most people typically have the manual uh, type of wheelchair, and so especially when we think about the demands that their shoulders and their arm lines go through, uh, especially going up ramps. And so sure. it's, it's one of those things where in that community, and I think it's really under, it's, it's undervalued, and, but it's also uh, underestimated on how many people are actually in the wheelchair community alone. Uh, it's hard to get an actual gauge on actual statistics, but, uh, I've seen everything from, uh, you know, upwards of 5 million people wheelchair bound in the U.S. alone. Uh, and if that's the case in just the U.S., think about what's happening worldwide. And, right. and we as a fitness industry have taken that specific demographic and just ignored them. And, and I think, in, and that's one of the biggest gripes that I have about what we do in this industry is, we totally discard or we trivialize and ignore a whole bunch of different demographics. Um, yeah. I don't think it's done. It's not done maliciously. We don't, we don't, we're not doing it out of bad intention. It, it's just out of sight, out of mind yeah. because that's just kind of what humans fall into. If we don't think, if it's not in front of us, we don't oftentimes don't think about it. Mm -hmm. And so between the wheelchair bound community and the aging demographic, those are the two demographics, two of, especially the aging population, that uh, the fitness community just kind of puts up on, puts in the back of the back of the pantry, so to speak. So uh, we all want the athletes. We want the athletes. We want the celebrities. We want the young 20, 30 year old people. We you know that's what we're after, but that that's such a small part of the community overall uh, as far as the general population is concerned so as trainers yeah, is. you've got to be able to really open up your market and, and really open up how many people you can truly affect well you know we're in an interesting time too now because i'm 59 so I'm tail end baby boomer. I think the mm -hmm. official year ended uh, 64 was the last year. There are a lot of us boomers out here and there are a lot of them that are older than I am. And then they're the ones who are older than the boomers. The earliest ones started in 45 or six. Um, 
mm -hmm. 46, I guess. Because the year, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, that, now it just so happens that I am, I work with that population a lot, but it's primarily because they have, the Parkinson's is more prevalent in that population or, you know, some other issues, uh, Alzheimer's and age-related, typically age-related disease. I mean, I know people in their 20s in Ireland who have a couple of people who have Parkinson's, but typically it is age-related, so I'm with them a lot. And I think I would agree with you that the, uh, the boomer population and older than that needs more attention, more help. There's some cool things out there. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong and I, I don't want to get in trouble. I'm not dissing anybody here. I'm not trying to criticize. There are a lot of silver sneakers programs out there and that's cool. It's totally fine because there's no harm being done whatsoever. However, <laughs> There's also a lot of other stuff that would be much more beneficial than just silver sneakers. And that's where um, we, we need more. We need more. And so that like your product is something we can insert into the workouts for these people. It could be like the first thing they do really when they get started. That would help them so greatly. And I'm glad you mentioned that about the population. And the other one that I find is a lot uh, with learning disabilities. I work a lot with mm -hmm. about half of my clientele right now. And, and you know what? They're ignored a lot of times. Same thing with the wheelchair users. Yes. Well, it is. And that's, like I said, it's extremely unfortunate. Uh, I think our, I think we are really trying to, to give a bigger push to an awareness to, to why, to, to this event, uh, what's taking place. And uh, I know there are a lot of great educators out there that, like, like myself, that really understand that yeah there's a huge segment that we're just you know pushing off to the side and we shouldn't be doing that anymore uh as far as the thing that the sticks uh really as a tool can the way i think of it and view it is 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 for a lot of people in those in those demographics we just mentioned it's it's a confidence thing and it's an intimidation thing yeah uh People don't go to older, a lot of older population don't go to trainers or gyms out of intimidation factor. Absolutely. Right. And so is that, if that happens, they're intimidated to go to a training facility or a box gym. They're intimidated to work out on their own because they're like, what do I do? Uh, they look at a lot of programs out there and they're like, holy crap, I don't think that's for me and I can't do that stuff. And so we we leave them sitting in a position where they feel pretty much uh like an invalid uh they they're they they're in a bad mindset because they're kind of like there's nothing out there for me so yeah. with fix this gives them something that's going to number one allow them to move safely and really stay within since they feel confident to start to explore new things but that's one of the very first things that you have to instill is confidence and safety and if you can instill confidence and safety into these into the these groups of, of that we're talking about these people are really going to gravitate to it and that's the feedback that we've gotten from the privilege of working with uh, people in these demographics is so like this is awesome I mean, yeah. spouses, people that I've been training for years whose spouses would never come see me, you know, when we start, when we created stick mobility, their spouses are like, oh, I'll do that. And so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, yeah. cool, you know? Yeah. And so, and, from, and you know, even people that are intimidated with weights, even younger people, we know oh, it's sure. not just old. There are a lot of young people that don't want to lift weights. They're intimidated by weights. Mm -hmm. So... They may come in and start with stick mobility, and then over grad times, their confidence gets better, and then all of a sudden, I start to sneak weights in. You know, I start mm -hmm. to sneak some kettlebells in, start to sneak some suspension training and all these other tools, and it's just it's just a gradual thing over time. We just say, hey, let me check this. Let's try this out today. Let's try you. You know, why don't you pick this up and walk with this? And yeah. Before they know it, they're working with the tools that would have originally they would have been turned off to. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to go about it, too, because um, intimidation is a big factor for a lot of people. 
the idea of uh, what they might look like in front of other people doing it wrong or not knowing what to do at all, not knowing what, I've heard it a, a lot of times, they go into the gym where I work at Syracuse University. So I need a trainer. I don't know how to use any of this stuff. And we don't even use the machines that much. We do other stuff, but yeah. we might get to some free weights and machine here and there. Um, and the other thing too is, like you say, if if they are lacking that vision of being able to do something, it can cause well, maybe not depression or maybe depression depends, but lack of hope, you know, yeah. lack of possibility. And when it takes somebody really who knows so much, like yourself, you introduce them and you you don't give them the hope directly, but they find it through what you do with them, and they're like that. That creates momentum, and that's a big deal. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I think. I'm starting to see a slight shift. Uh, maybe it's just because it's, it's, I'm, I'm talking to like-minded people, but uh, we're starting to see a slight shift of people kind of understanding more of the mindset behind training as opposed to just the physical aspect behind training. Uh, yeah. and, and the physical aspect, the aesthetics, is always going to be king. I mean, it's, it's no matter 200 years from now, 300 years from now, it's still going to be predominantly the, the, main, the main piece in the cog, right? People are going to work out because they want to look aesthetically a certain way. And that's never going to go away, and, and nor should it. Uh, but at the same time, I think having people in the proper mindset and understanding the benefit of what that brings to their life outside of the gym, not only in the gym, I think is going is starting to pick up steam and starting to pick up relevance, and, and hopefully, long after you and I are gone, brother. I mean, I hope 200 years from now, it, it's it's the vast majority of people thinking that mindset. Yeah, and that's extremely important and profound because, you know, it, actually, it took me a while to learn this as a trainer. It took me a good couple of years to start to get it that. I'm dealing with a person, not muscles. I mean, yes, I'm dealing with muscles, but first and foremost, it's about the person. Yes. You know, and we we the better we can establish um, an understanding, and um, it could be empathy, it could be a lot of things, but establish understanding and sh about what they want, what they need, maybe what their fears are, their intimidation might be and what drives them and, and and then showing them that we care and it has to be sincere obviously and they know if you're bullshitting them or not you know so i mean they're gonna feel it and once I, that's the magic man and you like you say you know you can get into doing all kinds of stuff they never thought they'd do but you yeah. build up to it and that's the beautiful thing is and i'm always looking i i i want to hear that feedback when when clients come in people I work with come in and they say hey I did this thing yesterday or since the last time I saw you that I was number one amazed that I could actually do and number two realizing that this is something I couldn't couldn't have done be you know two three years ago yeah and and that's when that person gives you that verbal feedback that tells you they're really folk they're paying attention and, and they they're 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 understanding why we we've done what we've done, you know. Um, yep. Even during this lockdown period, I've I've had uh, I had a client text me. And she's like, you know, she's like, for all the crap I give you about all the drills that you put me through, she's like, and some of them I just think she's like, honestly, some of them I think they're just like a waste of time. Sometimes she's like, after being at home and and doing a lot of things around the house because she's a finance person but now at home she's not only doing that but she's doing more gardening she's doing more uh home improvement stuff she's like i get why you have us do what we do yeah she's like i understand levers now i understand if i'm carrying something away from my body it's adding more stress versus holding it in close to my body she's like i understand those principles that you've been trying to teach me for all these years she goes okay i get it she goes now i understand why you do what, I, what you do and i'm like perfect you know it makes it all worthwhile doesn't it brother yeah it's, and it like i said it, it took some time but she gets it and so whether it's a year down the road two years down the road as long as it's 
as long as they get it at some point, some people get it quicker than others, right? Some people, yeah, yeah. You, you have to do it right from the very first step and they're like, oh, I, I like this, right? right. Uh, our friend, Dr. Emily Splickle was a perfect example, right? And a lot of our top level educators, we give them the stick. We literally show them two things and they're like freaking money, you know? And she was like, that was, we showed her two things and she's like, oh my God, love it. Yeah. You know, it's been a huge supporter of, of us ever since. Yeah. For other people, you've got to show them a lot more, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they, for whatever reasons, they, they just take a little bit longer to, to understand what we're doing. And so, and, you know, like I said, it may be two months down the road. It may be a year down the road. But at some point, that light bulb finally comes on and they're like, all right, yeah. I got it. You know? Well, you know, it's interesting uh, when you take – uh, certain very distinctively different tools that they're not competing with each other. For example, I'll give you the trifecta here, something that I think is great. If you can use the Noboso insoles, because I used to teach for her and I loved it. I actually miss it a lot, but I might talk with her about doing it again at some point. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. But anyways, <laughs> I've got enough stuff going on, but I love her education. I really enjoy teaching it. And now she's got Naboso. Well, I mean, I've had extremely good results with those hundreds of times all over the world. You take that. I'm talking Parkinson's, by the way. Yep, yep, okay. You take this, and then throw the hyper ice vibrating ball in their hand for five, ten minutes, and then all of a sudden this becomes either little or nothing. Temporary fix, granted. Yep. And then work through their range of motion. You got a person who is within possibly within minutes reducing tremors moving better because of the stimulation of the nervous system from the the plantar skin nerves that got woken up by moving barefoot or putting in the insoles and going or get on the mats and warm up first and go and improving range of motion so we got stick mobility you don't just have a person moving better what's way better than that is you have a person who's many times feeling I've, I've had people feel completely defeated and in this book that I'm writing too. I tell stories. In fact, I have some people telling their own stories about, you know, I, I felt defeated and then I learned one technique and it changed my life. All it was was one little thing, but it was a game changer thing. And then when you get, I call it the trifecta because, you know, range of motion and Parkinson's usually ain't so good. They feel better. When they feel better, they move better. When they move better, they feel better. And they're like, it's magic. Then there's the ripple effect of all the people around them who will feel better because they feel better. And it, you know, all good happens. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I think is interesting is it, when we're in it, we see it, we appreciate it, we, we see the impact. And you know, like when I was 20 years of age, if I would have seen stuff like this going on at 20, I would have been like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's just, it's, that's because we're young, we're stupid, we're, we're ignorant. It's all these things, right? We lack life experience. We, we lack empathy. We lack all these little qualities that help us uh, become better coaches. Uh, and, but then, like I said, it, we see the power of empowerment. We see the effect yes. of empowerment. And, and I think that's, for me personally, in the way I've approached training and how my training's changed in 21 years is exactly that. Uh, I, I don't care about aesthetics, so to speak, for the most part, right? Yeah, I want you to look good. But what's looking good if you, if you move like crap? It, it doesn't it, – I'd rather you move great because if you move great, then you're going to move a little bit more. You're going to work out. You're going to move more, and then what's going to happen? Oops, sorry about that. What's okay. going to happen after that is I got to charge in, actually. What's going to happen oh. after that? Sorry, small adjustment. That's okay. Uh, what's going to happen after that is not only are you going to feel better and move better, but then you're going to look better. Yeah. You're going to be training a little bit more. You're going to, you know, you're going to start to make a little bit better decisions because you're going to feel better. And all these things will take place. And as a result of that, we get a uh, better result. So uh, that's exactly. a big thing of why I've started – I've shifted such a huge, huge trend in how I train people is for exactly that purpose.
I mean, in my opinion, and it's just my opinion, I think that's the way to do it. And it just comes from doing it similarly and seeing, you know, when people feel better, it's how they feel is much more important than the look. I mean, yeah, look in a certain way can make you maybe feel okay, but, uh, well, it's funny, I was just talking with um, Mike Fitch at Animal Flow the other day. Uh, we we've, go back a little ways and we've talked about this before. He used to be a bodybuilder. A lot of people don't know that, but he was like 50 pounds heavier with a lot of muscle. And he said, I can barely reach my hair to watch my head to watch my hair. And he says, I was in pain all the time and I could barely move. But we know he can move now. But he also feels a lot better. You know, and and it's it's so important how we feel. And that's and so and Mike's a perfect example, you know. Uh Mike's a great guy, awesome yeah. human being. And and to hear stories like that is is really what people need to hear, not just the clients, but I, we need a lot of trainers to hear those stories. Yeah. Uh but a lot egos get in the way, and unfortunately what happens is egos prevent you from the from admitting your vulnerabilities, you know, and, and those moments, but those are what people need to hear so that they have examples that it is okay. It is okay to go through these experiences and these experiences are what change us for the better. Uh, so Mike's talking about being a bodybuilder, being in pain all the time. And, and my background as a meathead also, you know, my goal when I was 18, my goal was to be on stage. You know, I wanted to be on stage. You know, I wanted to be the same thing. You know, uh, I I looked at it this way. I'm five three. Uh, I pack on man. I pack on muscle pretty pretty easily. Like it's an easy thing for me. So, you know, growing up reading, you know, all the muscle and fiction and all the other flex magazines and all that stuff, and and saying, oh, that could be me one day. Uh, but then all of a sudden transitioning that because I was like, oh, that just doesn't feel good. You know, um, at one point I was carrying 200 pounds on five, three, it felt miserable. Like mm-hmm. it just felt miserable. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but there were, you know, there were a lot of other th- sides of once I got into the, into that in nitty gritty part of bodybuilding and really understanding what it took. Uh, there were a lot of things I wasn't willing to do. And so I was like, okay, that's not for me, but still at the age of 25, I wanted to see how much I, you know, can I bench press 400? Can I deadlift this? Can I squat this? And so I got to those numbers. And then I, when I got to those numbers, I just went, okay, now what? You know, I've done that. I mean, my life didn't change, you know, like, like nothing. So I just got to those numbers and went, what did that do for me? You know, it was a, it was an achievement. It boosted my ego. Granted, it gave me that confidence. But at the same time, I also looked at it when if I'm feeling like more like crap and I'm not moving, you know, and so there's got to be something a little different. And uh, I had a trainer that I worked with, uh, him and I were standing there talking one day, and this was probably about uh, 12 years ago. And uh, so this was coming off. I had already been experiencing uh a big injury on my left wrist probably about 18 years ago that took place. And it's affected my left arm line for, you know, even to this day uh, because of the way I not only treated it afterwards, I didn't treat it quote unquote properly like I should have. Mm -hmm. Uh, I still have used it. Uh, We were, we were talking. And so about 11, 12 years ago, we were hanging out and this guy came into the gym that we worked at and, uh, He's probably, he was in his 60s, late 60s, still cycling, you know, still looking for the aesthetics, which at late 60s, you're kind of like, really? Uh, but his elbows hadn't seen extension in, in, in decades. This mm-hmm. guy's biceps were just, so he walks in really stiff, very Frankenstein-ish. And so as he's, as he's literally just trying to lurch through the gym, we were looking at him and I was like, man, I was like, Oh, that just looks so painful. Like I see every step is enough for him. And, uh, this guy looked at me and said, well, if you keep doing what you're doing, that's going to be you in 20, 30 years. And I was just all like, Oh, wow. You know, like, and yeah. so those are the moments where you got to be like, sometimes you got to have somebody say that to you mm-hmm. or, but you've got to be willing to also be accept, uh, willing to, accept that information and go 
you're right. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, that's my future. If I don't change what I'm doing, you're exactly right. That's, that could be me in 20, 30 years. I, I know what you mean. I, I actually, my ego got in the way back in the day. Couldn't tell me anything like that. I just figured I'd get over it because there was a point in time where I was not uh, competition ready or anything like that, but pretty lean and pretty buffed and cut and whatever. It felt good, you know, whatever, sort of psychologically accepted it. Everything hurt all the time. And then I don't know what happened. I don't even know how I got out of that, but it was, it certainly wasn't because anyone said that, uh, down the road, I might be a mess because um, I wouldn't allow that because my ego got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, I guess just there's a part of it getting older that's kind of cool if you learn from being an idiot like I was <laughs> a well, lot of times in a lot of ways. <laughs> it's as long as you have that, as long as you at some point, you know, if if the flip sw- if the switch flips at some point. Yeah. It's just at what point does it flip? At yeah. least, at least it came on, you know. And so, we see a lot of people that 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 switch never flips. I mean, yeah. it just stays the way it is. So, uh, it, at least it, it turned on for you. So that was a good thing. Yeah. So, you know? Yeah. So tell me, um, if people want to learn, or let's let's say this, where's the best place for them to go to learn about the product, order the project? And, and education too. You have, do you have education on the site uh, uh, website available? Uh, no, not on the site. So currently, what's going on? So if you want, we you can just go to stickmobility.com and okay. you can check out the shop and uh, go from there. Uh, we do have some uh, some testimonials on the site and some uh, visuals, some short little intro videos, so you'll get some idea of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Our YouTube channel is really where most of our content is. Okay. Uh, so we have over 200 videos on YouTube. Right. Uh, the YouTube, as you know, is set up in, in sections. So you can look at uh, legs, hips, shoulders, uh, so a fascial line. So you can kind of attack it from uh, a strategy of that point. You can say, okay, I want to do some hip work today or I want to do some shoulder-focused stuff or work on thoracic mobility. I can work, focus just on those videos. Yeah, uh, we do have an in-person level one course. It's two days. Uh, all our education comes with sticks when it comes to the two uh, two days uh, certifications. We need the sticks there for number one for you to learn with, and then after you learn with them, those are your tools. So we want you to have those so that way when you go to the gym on Monday, you're like, cool, I can implement these right away. Uh, I think one of the biggest beefs that I have with a lot of uh, product systems out there that teach education is include the cost of one of your products in the education. Don't just teach me how to use your tool and then let me leave the class without it because I want to have that to implement the very next day so that way I can start to work on refining my teaching techniques with it and learning what I can do with it. And, re, and really nailing down what you just taught me in the last two to three days. Yeah. So we always want the sticks with you included in the, in the course. Uh, the COVID thing has actually really focused us on giving our course to an online platform, which we're currently working on. So Neil and I are doing a lot of filming. Uh, we expect to have that up by the end of May at least a very rough cut. So we're just doing filming in the gym locally. So it's not uh, the highest quality production, so to speak. Uh, So we just want to get something up and running. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of the online course is going to have right now currently over 150, uh, uh, 150 question exam. So it's going to be pretty in depth. Uh, The live course, we actually only have a 25 question written exam. So it's a yeah. vast difference because we, we want to make sure that if you're doing this on your own in your own home, that you're really getting what we want you to get out of it. So that's why we have such an extensive written examination part. Yeah. And then we're also going to be doing a uh, practical where you'll 
we'll give you scenarios that we want you to coach and teach. And then you're going to film that, send it into us so that way we can grade it before we right. give you your certification. So uh, that's what we have currently right now. And of course, Instagram is our probably our biggest social media platform. Yeah, that's great, man. That's good. Okay. Um, so I'll have, so what will happen with this video, um, is it'll get, you know, I'll, I'll tell you more when we, when I end the recording, but, uh, we'll also, the, the audio of this goes up on the SoundCloud and then that automatically syncs with the iTunes podcast. So, uh, for people who are listening, go to stickmobility.com, just how it sounds, but I will have a link on the screen here and there throughout and on the intro and on the outro. Um, this is good, man. I'm glad we got a chance to connect. Um, and I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this question. I never tell anybody. <laughs> okay. All right. I know That's you good. have an answer. I know you have an answer. So, um, and, and I don't even, we don't even have to stop talking right now. I just thought of this right now is, uh, do you have a takeaway message? If there was a one piece of advice you'd want to give to anybody out there, it could be the trainer community, it could be to whoever what would your advice be? My advice would be to really contemplate why you train the way you train. Uh, I think that's one thing that people don't really take uh, enough um, of a perspective on because every choice you make is ultimately going to affect you long term. Humans are inherently bad at at evaluating the long-term ramifications of their decision making and especially when it comes to weightlifting and health and fitness that is extremely prevalent uh so the things that you're doing at 25 30 years of age will come back and they will let you know that at the age of 60 that they did have a part in how you feel at the age of 60 and so if that's some, if there was one thing that I could do personally, if I could go back in time, it would be to tell my 18 year old self, 15 year old self, even because hell, I started working, I started lifting weights probably at 14, 15. So I would even tell myself back then, really think about what's going to happen and how you want to feel when you're 50, 60 years of age. Uh, because staying physically relevant is why we're doing this. It, it's if we get into working out what is the purpose of working out it's to look good but then it's people say well i want to live longer i want to feel better well if that's what you want to do then your training protocols should ultimately lead you to that goal and if your training program and a lot of training programs out there long term wise are not going to take you to that goal so uh, short term wise, it may, it's going to have a huge impact, but what's going to happen 34 years down the road. And I talk to a lot of people that, that ultimately, especially in their older years, they look back and they go, wow, now I understand why this, this, and this ended up ultimately coming back and bite me in the butt. Yeah. And, and I know I had read an article years ago in uh T nation. I think it was, it might've been another, uh, publication where they asked uh bodybuilders they just a total uh totally anonymous answers what's the one thing you regret training and the vast majority of them said i regret training my mobility and flexibility aspects wow that yeah. was their overwhelming answer i wish i would have focused on my movement and how i move because right now i'm paying the price for that yeah yeah, I mean, I've I've seen that too in my training, and actually, being fifty nine, I've had a couple of things that have come back and haunted me that I've been dealing with. But you know, I'm okay and doing well, and um, I think that's a great takeaway message, man. That was Thanks. that was really good, important, really important and re relevant. So, yep. well, cool, man. This has been great. Well, thank you, Carl. Yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you very much. I, I like it. that bridge. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge. I like that behind me. I'll take that. That's such I an iconic view. It's, it's funny, a... uh, people watching or listening, I, I, we were on a call the other day with some people, and you had the bridge on. So I found the settings 
I can't do it on my laptop, but on the phone, I could. And yeah. I put it in my garden. <laughs> so I did. I yeah. My little new raised garden I did. Uh, it's going to be where the tomatoes go because that's the only place that gets sun in my yard. But uh, yeah, so, okay, stickmobility.com. And uh, I'm certain they, if they just go to YouTube and just put in stick mobility, your channel yeah. will probably come up, right? The okay. mobility channel pop up. Uh, go ahead, feel free to subscribe. And yes. uh, we also have podcasts. Oh, so, good, good. Uh, so we have the movement is the movement made better podcast. Oh, good. Stick mobility movement made better. Uh, so it's just our tagline. Uh, it's just Neil and I, just you know, just kibitzing. And uh, uh, we've had a couple guests on. We're going to definitely have some more guests on. So uh, luckily, we're starting out at a with a pretty solid base of, of fans. Uh, so, uh, we're, and we've been fortunate enough to have some really great relationships already in the industry. So, uh, yeah. we're fortunate enough to be able to have some, we're going to be able to bring on some pretty high quality educa educators and coaches onto our podcast because we're already have relationships with people, you know, such yeah, as that's yourself, great. And, you know, and Mike and, and, uh, oh, Don and Kevin Carr and people like that. So, uh, yeah, that's great, and, man. And the whole point of the podcast is, is really just to talk about different perspectives. Uh, we want to bring some thought provoking content. Uh, we don't want to really just keep regurgitating a lot of what we keep hearing on the same uh, podcast. We want to challenge some thought processes because that's where learning takes place is, is being challenged in, in the way we think and the way we perceive things. Yeah. Uh, it's okay to be challenged. It's not, uh, it's not something to get defensive and, 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 and uh, uh, start to battle. And, and we have to be able to go, okay, this person thinks this way. Let me put myself in his or her perspective and say, okay, well, that's not something I would have thought about, but I see his or her value the validation behind that. I see their point and uh, I like it or no, it, you know, it's not something for me. Yeah. You know, Dennis, that's important. Um, when I first started out training, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I think I came from a certain very specific education um, for a certification and it, it was fine. Um, the, the problem I had was that I, I was so molded in, in that I wasn't looking outside of that for possibilities. And I'd be, the reason I'm saying this is not to uh, diminish the quality of the education I received, which was very, very, very good. However, there's more out there. And, and there are a lot of really good um, minds and brains, a lot of good courses and curriculums, a lot of great education that you can use and, and blend it with each other. If, if it's your thing, you know, and I think some of it goes back to where our goals are. What, how do we like to move? How will we move? If we don't do something we like, we probably won't move. If we don't like the workout we're doing, we probably won't go do it. So we can find things we like to do and just keep that. That's one of the reasons I started doing interviews six years ago. In fact, uh, Emily was one of my first but I was oh, nice. really nervous when I met with her. <laughs> oh, for, oh, for her. <laughs> but yeah, I'll tell you why. And she knows this story. I'll just say it. So Emily Splickle, Dr. Emily is a very good friend of ours, both Dennis and me. And, uh, but I was kind of pretty green in the interview process, especially I knew nothing about barefoot, but I got her name from Brent Brookbush, who's a very dear friend and taught me a ton of stuff. And I love Brent and I taught for him for a while. But anyways, bottom line is, I sent her an email at Brent's suggestion. She emailed back within minutes, and then she pretty much interviewed me on the phone that night for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, she's so sharp. She knows so much. I was really struggling to sound like I knew anything, but I met with her the week after that, and that changed my life. In fact, really, that's ultimately what led me to meeting you is presenting at her Barefoot Summit. September 2018. I'd known about stick mobility, but then I had to actually see you and see the products. Uh, I've seen a product before, but I hadn't seen how you do it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that, that's 
going back to what I was saying, because I tend to go on tangents, but I always try to tie it back, is being open is really important, uh, learning more. And uh, you, I love your advice, man. It's really good advice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, good. Well, listen, man, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, uh, everybody, for watching, for listening. Stickmobility.com. Go there, check it out, and then put in Stick Mobility in YouTube and check that out because there are over 200 videos there, and I like how they're categorized, too, the different sections. So it's well done. Dennis, thanks, man. Thank you, Carl. I appreciate it, my brother. Appreciate it, man. And uh, don't hang up. I'm just going to end the recording, and uh, I just want to talk to you for a minute. Thank you, everybody, again. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I sure did. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.